<laughs> Today on Rock the Park. Look at this. You cannot beat that. We're in Montana, land of big skies, big mountains, and big adventure. Woo! Come on! This is what we call a ram jam. Oh, wow. Our journey through glacier country is about to get a little hairy. The people are blocking this bear's path. And it all starts now. Oh, well, he's coming right for us. Let's back up. I'm Jack Stewart. Whoa! And I'm Colton Smith. <laughs> we love the national parks. Oh, my gosh. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it. Just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Wow! Ready for the time of your life? Yeah! Get set to rock the park. Welcome to Glacier National Park in Montana, one of the largest and most intact ecosystems in North America. The park is named for the colossal glaciers of the past that whittled away the summit. With over one million acres of mountains, turquoise lakes, and forested valleys, it's no wonder this park has been dubbed the crown of the continent. Despite its size and rugged nature, there are numerous ways to explore its wonders. We're gonna take one of the most awesome drives on the planet. First, a heart-pumping cliffside adventure through the park. Then, we'll explore the glacial lakes by boat, where we hope to see a lot of wildlife and cap it off with an epic hike up to Grinnell Glacier. Big plans for a massive park. Glacier National Park is located in northwestern Montana on the Canadian border, sprawled across the Rocky Mountains. Glacier was really where I fell in love with nature. This place is amazing. When it comes to Glacier, there is one adventure on everyone's to-do list. We're gonna take the Going to the Sun Road, which is one of the coolest roads I've ever driven in the country. Going to the Sun Road takes you high up into the mountains. This day is gonna be action-packed. We're talking 52 miles, the only road that crosses the park and the Continental Divide. This road alone takes you through some of the best scenery in the park. And you don't even have to get out of your car. You start in the lower areas and you wrap around Lake McDonald, which is the biggest lake in the park. After a while, you're going through some forests and then you see this tunnel. And when you get to this tunnel, it just hits you. You are in the mountains. Oh, wow. It's nuts. It takes about two hours to drive the entire road, but we're taking our time so we don't miss a thing. Like the bighorn sheep along the mountainsides. You can probably guess how they got their name. Those enormous curved horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. Males are called rams, and they often butt horns to establish their dominance. They're excellent jumpers, which make them as sure-footed on rocky cliffs as mountain goats are. We're driving by the Weeping Wall, and you see why it got its name, because literally you're driving by this cliffside where water's just trickling down the rocks. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is what it looks like early in the summer. If you have your windows open, you're gonna get wet. Construction on this road started in 1921 and took more than 15 years to complete. It was a monumental task to cut through the mountains. Could you imagine being part of that group of people who built this thing? Well, what I want to know is how were they able to chisel away this road in 1932? I, I would think it'd be hard to do today. <laughs> Clearing the snow is no easy feat either. Every year, the road gets up to 80 feet of snow in places, and it usually takes until late June or early July just to reopen the road. The Triple Arch which is another landmark on the road that shows you how hard these guys had to work to make sure the road didn't just crumble down the mountainside. Going to the Sun Road is not for the faint of heart. There are tight curves and a few spots along the way, passengers on the right side of the car can literally look over the edge of the road. I've got a thing with heights and I'm, <laughs> I'm trying not to look down too much. You are up so high. It's truly a marvel of just engineering. Dude, look at the mountains over there. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. They look like they're just like straight slabs of rock. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not looking down. We're going up, up, and up. And then finally, we get to Logan's Pass. Oh. Wow. Logan's Pass, nice little stopping point on going to the Sun Road. At an elevation of almost 7,000 feet, 
Logan Pass sits atop the Continental Divide, which is a natural boundary where waters on the western side flow toward the Pacific Ocean, and on the east, waters flow into the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. It's also a perfect opportunity to stretch our legs and check out the hundred or so mountain goats, which seem to have taken a permanent residence here. Well, preliminary data uh, that we've gathered shows that the mountain goats use the habitat up there a little differently than their wild brothers or cousins do in other less visited areas of the park. Mark Beal is studying why goats like to hang around trails. One theory is that goats feel safer and better protected from predators when around a lot of people. So we want to be able to get a better hand on that so that we can provide uh, still a good opportunity for visitors to not only see and photograph the wildlife but also to do it safely for them and the wildlife. Well one thing that I have learned is that I do have a fear of heights and I do get a little bit of vertigo so I would not make a good mountain goat. No, I'm right there with you. Him on the other hand though, he actually has a good set of hooves on him. So. <laughs> it's been a great day but we have one more stop before we call it quits for the night. All right, so we just pulled off of going to the sun, and we're coming up to the Jackson Glacier Overlook. It's one of the largest glaciers they still have in the park oh, today. Wow! Man, you see that? At about 250 acres in size, Jackson Glacier is definitely one of the easiest to see. But like all the glaciers here, it's shrinking fast. 20, 30 years ago, it was much, much bigger than it is today. On our hike to Grinnell Glacier tomorrow, we'll get a much closer look at some glaciers and explore why they're melting. Meanwhile, just as the sun is starting to set, we spot a coyote alongside the road, seemingly enjoying the view as well. Going to the sun road, it never disappoints. I think this is our turn. Is that it? It looks like it. Ooh, it's been a long drive. Yeah. Tonight, we're camping out next to St. Mary's Lake. We're gonna keep our eyes and ears open for elk that come down to the lake to drink. Rocky Mountain elk have the largest antlers of all types of elk, and they are among the noisiest when they bugle to warn other elk to stay away. Coming up. There he is. Making noise takes on a whole new importance as a black bear scurries toward hikers who don't see him coming. And he is, get, oh, he wow. is getting really close. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's sunrise here in Glacier National Park in Montana, and we're off to explore the aptly named Many Glacier region on the east side of the park. Today we're headed to Grinnell Glacier. The hike to Grinnell is actually a pretty strenuous climb, but it's one of the coolest glaciers that you can hike to in the park. To get to our trail, we're gonna cut across a couple of lakes by boat. It's a great chance to take in the scenery and spot some wildlife. Swift Current Lake lies at almost 5,000 feet above sea level and is fed by snow and glacial melt from the nearby mountains. Moose love to congregate near the shore to feed on the underwater vegetation. It's easy to tell a male moose from a female one. Only the bulls have antlers, which can span up to six feet across. You do not want to mess with this guy. Oh, wow. There she is. Look at that. The mountains around Lake Josephine soar more than a mile high. And again, the animals are all out enjoying breakfast. Jack, look at that deer. Wait, is that a deer? Yep, that's a deer, all right. Mule deer have long ears like a donkey, which is how they got their name. They often forage near the shore on grasses and berries, making them easy to spot. See that waterfall out there? Oh, yeah. Well, that's our glacier, right? Yes. Exactly. Oh, man. So there's our climb. That's our destination. Grinnell Point rises up to 7,600 feet. Like the glacier itself, it's named after famed conservationist George Bird Grinnell, who helped create this park. Even though Grinnell Glacier is only a four-mile hike from here, we're gonna have a vertical gain of 1,600 feet, which means this trail is steep. But more intimidating than that is that this is full-on bear country. Already, this hike is awesome. We're going straight up the hill, and we can already see a couple of glaciers and tons of wildlife along the trail, including spruce grouse, nicknamed the fool's hen, for their apparent lack of fear of people. They let you get really close before flying off. Further down the trail, we spot more mountain goats. They are amazing climbers as they scamper along the surrounding cliffs. Next to the waterfall, he's really, really tiny. Oh, yeah. yeah that's it. I'll tell you one thing, you're not about to see me climbing up there. We're going up and up. 
and after a while, I'm starting to get a little tired. But then I look to my right and I see bear scat right on our trail. I already feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up because I'm looking around and I see huckleberries, which is one of the bear's favorite snacks. We obviously know there is a bear somewhere around us. It's kind of one of those weird things where you want to see the bear, but at the same time, not on the trail coming at you. Jack, Jack, come here now. There's a bear a little bit down the hillside. He's kind of hiding in the brush right now. I think it's a black bear. I think if we continue up the trail, we're going to stay at a safe distance, but we might be able to look down on top of him. There he is. Oh, yep, yeah, there he is. Wow. Yeah, is. Oh, there it's he definitely is. a black bear. He's actually moving up the hillside towards us. So we're going to want to be careful here. We're not moving any closer to him, that's for sure. We wanted to see wildlife, but this bear is too close for comfort. He's actually right down on the ridge, right down there. He's making his way up towards a big group of people over there. This is a pretty scary situation because these people are up there. They don't even notice him yet, and he's moving straight for them, and he's not veering off at all. Our instinct is to yell and warn these hikers, but sudden loud noises and movement could provoke the bear and make the situation worse. This is something that you don't want to have happen. Literally, the people right now are blocking this bear's path. I think that once he sees everybody up here, he should turn down. But if not, we do need to take all the precautions. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, wow. He's really close. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Get out your bear spray right now. We're in Glacier National Park in Montana, where a black bear is charging up a hill right toward a group of hikers on our trail. That was, an, that was crazy. Yeah, that was an incredibly close call. This is why you need to be aware of what's going on around you when you're out on the trail. For the most part, these people didn't even notice the bear approaching. When you're on the trail, you have to yield to the bear. Luckily, everybody did get out of the way, and all this guy was trying to do the whole time was just get past the path and up to the mountains. Definitely is a reminder that we are in Glacier, we are in the wilderness, and this is bear country. This is not our home, this is theirs. Look at him just running away, oh man. We've got another mile or so to hike up to the glacier. And the higher we get up into the alpine zone, where there are less trees, the more incredible the views. We're getting really high up there. We've got a beautiful view of Grinnell Lake. And then you've got this towering waterfall. It's crazy that all this is because of that glacier. It's insane. The lake, the waterfall, even how these mountains are carved is due to glaciers. Glaciers are formed when more snow falls in the winter than melts in the summer. The snow compacts into dense ice, and when that ice gets heavy enough, gravity will start to pull it downhill, grinding away the rock beneath it, creating awesome mountains like these. Look at this view. Oh, it's amazing. This is one of the prettiest day hikes you can absolutely do in the park. Oh, man. Look how blue the water is. That amazing color is a result of the mixture of glacial melt and all that crushed sediment churned up coming down the mountain. The combo of those two elements refracts the light in just the right way for us to see this bright blue color. Woo. That water's blue. Now the trail's getting pretty steep. The drop-offs are, are pretty high. What do you think of that, that uh, hillside right there? A little steep, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's why I pay attention to the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! Yeah. We're headed right through the waterfall, so come on. Oh, wow. Look at that view. Wow. We've climbed probably 1,500 feet in elevation now, and the air's getting a little thinner. From here, we can see some of the smaller glaciers surrounding Grinnell, like Jem up there on the ridge, and Salamander hanging onto the cliff. See how he looks like a salamander? Oh yeah, it totally does. There's the head. <laughs> See if he got a little tail. Those little glaciers are cool, but nothing like our destination. Right up over the ridge, out of sight, is the actual Grinnell Glacier. It's pretty cool that we're gonna get to witness Grinnell Glacier, which is one of the few remaining glaciers here still in the park. In a few years, this thing might be gone. In the last 100 years, the number of glaciers in this park has gone from 150 to 25. And estimates show that those could all be gone by 2030. Oh my gosh. Whoa. I was not expecting this. 
This is really cool, but I thought this was gonna be completely full of ice down here. I wasn't expecting the lake. That's all ice melt. That's insane. You can really kind of see where it's receded. Like that went all the way across over to there. These glaciers have been growing and shrinking for thousands and thousands of years, shaping the park. Grinnell Glacier is actually one of the most photographed glaciers in the park. They have photographs dating all the way back to the mid 19th century. It's actually one of the reasons why they're able to tell how much it's receded. Visitors actually used to be able to walk on the glacier, but they're not able to do that anymore because of the effect it would have. And there's not that much to walk on anymore. Now all you can do is take a picture and enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Goes and your ears just go numb. Wow. I can't imagine how big that thing used to be. I know. This has been an incredible experience, but we've got to head back down the mountain before it gets dark. And just when we think our adventure is over, nature throws us another curveball. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Or rather, a curved horn in this case. Oh, he's a big guy, too. Oh, man. Look at that. It's not known exactly how many bighorn sheep remain here in the park, but we seem to have stumbled into a whole herd of them. Oh, wow. Man, they're close. They're right on our path. Oh, OK. Let's give them a little space. We don't want to get too close to these guys. They are big animals. I am so happy that we've seen all this wildlife today, but at the same time, these guys are on our trail. We got to figure out a way to get them to leave. OK, he's looking right at you. We need to get down the mountain before dark without upsetting these guys. As I'm moving forward, I see this guy kind of eyeing me, and he's moving forward himself, and it gets me a little nervous. He looks a little agitated. Oh, I don't like that. Coming up, it's a ram jam on the trail. Oh, he's coming right for us. Yeah, he's here. Keep backing up. Let's back Keep up. Backing up. Oh. We're in Montana, facing a serious roadblock on our hike back down Grinnell Point. We've got a ram jam right now. We've got bighorn sheep who are just sitting on our path. We've given them a little space, and they're not moving. So what we've been told is basically, we got to try to get them off the trail. Colt and I are going to go down there. We're going to be very careful, but we're going to try to use our voices to try to spook them off the trail. As funny as it sounds, we've also been told by the park rangers that the best way to safely get bighorn sheep to move is to make spitting noises as you're yelling. Hey! 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 Leave! We gotta go home! Come on, guys! Yeah, you! Get out of here! Yeah, yeah, yeah! You guys are good! You're all right. Just keep it moving. Look it, I see your buddies up there. Go join them! All right. All right. We did it. They're safe and we're safe. Everybody wins. Another crazy trip to Glacier, man. I know. We packed so much into this one. What an amazing time. We got to see Glacier from our car go into the sun, which is just, just amazing. There is no road like that in the entire country. And then we got to see the glaciers themselves. Yeah, honestly, Grinnell Glacier was one of the coolest hikes I've ever done. I was really excited wow. to get there, and then when we were there, it was a strange feeling, because here you're looking at this amazing sight, but you're also watching it slowly go away. And that was kind of a weird feeling to experience. Thinking about what that glacier looked like 100 years ago, which isn't that long in the grand scheme of things, and now to see it reduced to basically a lake, I mean, I wasn't expecting that. Well, it's another reason that uh, people should get out to Glacier now and get to see those while they're still around. I absolutely love this place. I could come back to Glacier a million times because this park offers something new every time I come here. Anything can happen here. I'm kind of bummed that we're going to be leaving. No, I feel you on that. But at the same time, I don't get too sad when I'm leaving Glacier because I always know I'm going to be back. You said it. Whether you're looking to lose yourself in nature or find strength in yourself you never knew you had, Glacier National Park's got something for everyone. And remember, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.